power of getting started. It's very interesting some of the emails that I get in my inbox. This is a good one. <clears throat> this is a very, very good email. It's a great email. It's an awesome email. We'll tell you about it. Got this, Glenn. This, hey, Glendon, as I start off. Hey, Glendon. A long time fan and watching your videos for years. The first few years that I watched your videos, it was purely for entertainment purposes. You tell great stories, and I love the way that you handled yourself in the storage auction business. Well, one video you did, it was uh, had something to do with being a little scared, a little bitch. I can't remember it exactly, but I started to take action. My father owned a jewelry business for years, and in the basement of his home, it was all of this stuff to make jewelry. You know. So I started going over there, talking to my dad, and we did these projects, and we started making jewelry and trinkets and using up the findings and stuff. And it became fun, and I reconnected with my dad. We hadn't really talked that much, but you know, I was over there virtually every day after work. Well, here it is, two years later. My dad passed. I'm cleaning out the house. I know everything since I've been there. The day after my dad passes, I get laid off from my job. At first, I freaked out because it was a very good job. It was uh, one of the reasons I probably never got in the storage auction business was I'm making, as he put it, really, really good money. I found myself without a job and a wife, two kids, and a big-ass mortgage. And as I was down in the basement going through my father's stuff and looking at it because he had had some illness, so he didn't really have an inheritance to leave us. The house was paid for, but the house wasn't really that big of a deal, and it also was split amongst three children. But no one wanted the stuff in the basement. Well, I had already had a good amount of trinkets and jewelry and things made and I started to sell them online. The first month I sold these, I made more by a tune of $1,500 than I was actually bringing in from my job. Granted, I had years of putting together stuff, building stuff, trial and error, and I've created my own website and I'm selling jewelry, and some months are good, some months are bad, but we have not missed a beat in our house. I just want to say thanks so much for being an inspiration. I really appreciate what you do. That's a good email. None of that bitchy, whiny shit. I, I tell you about this to let you know the power of getting started because so many people are waiting for permission to be successful or they're waiting on someone to say you can do it Bucky they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting and one day there's not going to be any more sand in the hourglass it's not it's going to be empty it's going to be game over now this is one of the reasons that I created 30 days at 2500 because I've had this conversation with other people there are many people who feel that you can only be born an entrepreneur. You uh, must have all of this special stuff. You have to be incredibly innately gifted with entrepreneur fairy dust or dick dust or titty dust, whatever kind of dust. You need that special dust. It's really about getting started. It is really about just taking the moment to begin because everyone's like waiting I'm going to explain because that went out in uh, on the email list this morning because there's special content that goes out on the Hustler Mindset newsletter so you know there's a box here or a first link below go ahead and subscribe you will love me a long time when I created 30 days to $2,500, it was beta, it was an experiment, it was just something. But I knew from doing other webinars, the biggest issue is people don't want to get started 
or they will pick, choose, and refuse the modules they want to do. And I, I see people creating courses that's like, well, hey, you know, you don't have to do this or you can skip ahead. And, you know, once again, I understand giving the customer what they want to be successful. Well, I have a new thing. Give the customer what they need, whether they fucking like it or not to be successful. Do you think that when my editor, when they, this was on Pimp and Craigslist, my editor flaked out on me, I had a bunch of pre-sales, and I had, what, four days to get that shit together? Do you think that was fun? Do you think that was fun? The creative part, the lacing of the words, to that shit's fun. The back office stuff, dealing with crazy personalities, and I'm talking about internally. There, there's many, many things that come along with being a writer, presenter, speaker, that are not fun, but they're necessary. And this is the thing. This whole, you know, if you do something you love, you'll never work another. That's bullshit. It is total bullshit. That's one of the reasons that when I was in the storage auction business, there was so many things I hated about the storage auction business. I love the profits. I love the process. I love the exposure and the experiences that were gained from the storage auction business. But there was so much shit. Crazy ass people people who didn't like you bidding you up on units. This was a daily event for me. People were like, oh, you're bid? Oh, he's bid? Buy her, Ux. Don't even want the unit. Just don't want me to get it cheaply, which was probably a good strategy because I did the same shit to other people. But essentially, you have to really, really put on your big boy pants, your big girl panties, and step boldly out there into the world with your shit because... I, I'm, I'm, you know, there are people's like, what's this big thing coming? And see, this is a trap because it's like, well, this big thing's coming. I'll get ready for that or I'll take action for that. You are screwing yourself. You are not really, really giving yourself a chance to really enjoy the fruits of long term success by not getting started now. I don't care what it is. Like the guy, who, you know, had the materials to make jewelry from his father's basement. He got started years ago. He got started years ago. It made a difference today. It is overnight success is like Bigfoot, the Yeti. It's a myth. Many people who are, you know, purportedly overnight success have been at that shit 10 years or, or longer. Or if you, I'm, I'm serious. And we just like, oh, now they're on. Because we push that as a society because it makes us feel good for not doing shit with the minutes and the hours and the days and the weeks of our lives. It makes us feel good for sitting around jacking off every day while someone else is out there and they're like chipping away at that diamond of their dream. They're shaping it up polishing it then when they put it on we want to wear that same diamond of effort and success without the fucking work that is what's killing people uh you know i had many people when i first started you know streamline it make it efficient i will tell you they were right and they were wrong because there's some things i didn't listen and if i did listen i wouldn't have learned lessons that later on were very profitable for me you will learn how to make money from fucking up but you will only fuck up if you get started if you never get started no you won't fuck up no you will not suffer the embarrassment of making mistakes no no one will laugh and point oh he messed up oh he misspelled something no it didn't sell ha, ha, ha. you won't experience that but you also won't experience riding around in the middle of the day in Atlanta going to have lunch while everyone else is going to work at jobs they fucking hate here, that's that's another experience. I have had a job where I hit the alarm clock four times because I didn't want to get up. It was like powering up, like 
Dragon Ball Z, power level 10, okay? I gotta get up to 100 to get my feet on the floor. Okay, I'm up to 250 to get into my clothes, my scrubs on. Okay, it's cold as fuck out here. I'm at power level 1,000 to crank up this car and sit in this cold ass car. Just left the warm ass bed in this cold ass car, just shivering to go to this job that I cannot stand. But I'm the failure. Dealing with people, I would rather trip as I see them, or as they walk by me, we used to call it the CAG, trip them up and make them bust their face because I can't stand them. Many people are living lives like this, man. They're living lives like this. And I was talking to a friend, and I understand fear of failure, fear of success, and fear of not being accepted in the social tribe of your origin because there are people out there that won't do something because the tribes like uh you know um we don't think that's cool in this tribe motherfucker we don't think that's cool whoa 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 the tribe of the ineffective we don't think that's cool i see this uh one of the things i have to do with some of my consult clients is to re-engineer their tribalism that's how powerful this because understand intelligence capacity all of this stuff doesn't really prevent a smart person from doing the wrong thing tribalism will have you when you say you have an IQ of 160 170 which is some high shit but you're out there you're, you're born in the hood you've got this IQ and people like they know you're smart because you can do shit but you have this high IQ but because of tribalism and tribalism loyalty you will not fucking move out that hood you know that you need to be working on your invention studying for the SAT but no since tribalism has you hanging out with your boys because they'll tell you what you betting us you can't sit here on the corner and drink with the fellas what you too motherfucking good to be with the fellas yo we ran together we played pop warner football together we did all this stuff together now you better than us you can't share a drink with the fellas motherfucker that is worse than jewish mother guilt uh, i dated a jewish girl i've seen the jewish mother guilt don't don't even get weird on me I've seen this shit up close and personal and it's fucking scary and you got people who are caught up in the throes of that tribalism because they don't know how to reintegrate in a new tribe it's some scary shit people would rather remain unsuccessful than to reintegrate in a new tribe one of the problems with this is some black people with integration and assimilation People will say, well, you know, because you speak a certain way, you've assimilated, you motherfucking sellout. You ain't with us black people. And, you know, to anyone that says anything like that to another black person who is moving forward, you know, classic example, Stephen A talking about Mark Cubans. People were just like, Stephen A's a sellout. Stephen A's a coon. Stephen A is a very smart guy, and he's a very successful guy that makes several million dollars, about two, three million a year, for giving a fucking opinion. But, yo, you give opinions on Facebook all day, and all you do get is some angry comments from bitter people. But Stephen A is a sellout. But you keeping it real, keeping it real poor, keeping it real disenfranchised, keeping it really, really sad. Uh, I've had this conversation with some people that I know, and it's just, uh, I've been accused of it. It's like you're a Republican now. The conservative views that I have, I grew up in Alabama, I grew up in a very conservative state. I've had since I was a kid. Even before I understood the dichotomy of Republican, I've had these. And one of them is, you need to go out and do something and earn your way in life. Yes. I call that a common sense value. I don't call it a Republican value. Number two, I think you need to be accountable for your life. I don't call that a Republican value. I call that a common sense humanity value. But there are some people that if you have these values of self-sufficiency that you think at the age of 30 or 40, you go, you know, I, I personally think anyone that's 30 some, 40 some, 50 some that goes back home to live with their parents versus getting out here and busting their ass is a loser. 
That is my opinion. Sans cancer or some other calamity. Or maybe your house burnt down and then you had to move with mom and dad for a few weeks till you got some new shit. I'm not talking to you. I am talking to people who... Because I'm coming from... I've been in that situation. I was like facing homelessness or going to live with my mom. I chose homelessness. Because I knew that if I went back, there's a good chance I never would have left. Luxuries once tasted become necessities. This is one of the reasons that many people get caught up in the gravity of support and it turns into dependency. And they cannot escape it. It has as much gravity as a white dwarf. Look it up if you didn't take that in your 8th grade science class. And you get this. And I, and we have a lot of sorry people who cannot support themselves and it's not because they don't have the ability it's because they don't have the desire and they don't want to downgrade their lifestyle they don't want to downgrade their lifestyle i mean you know you living with mom and dad there's cable there's satellite you know mom always has the refrigerator fully stocked you come home from a long day of doing nothing there's dinner on the table oh and there's hbo in the basement what? You ain't, you ain't trying to leave. You have put yourself in a point where water has been thrown on your enthusiasm and your desire to be something in life. You've placed yourself in that position and then you want to come on YouTube or Facebook or any other place and then throw rocks, slings, and arrows at people who are more successful than you, not because they're smarter than you, because they made a choice not to be his poor average. He made a choice. You know, uh, I had this conversation. It's like, you're awful arrogant. And I said, you know what? The only people that say that shit to me are folks who haven't done shit with their lives. I've never had a person of success, of note, who's built something say any of that shit to me. Only motherfuckers that ain't done shit with their lives. I think I lost a friend that day. But, oh well. Because this is the thing. You, you have to mentally wrap yourself around it because understand and this is why you should read a lot and this is why you should read up on religion and philosophy and understand that many of the things you think about are part of a larger plan of philosophy that has been distilled to you to keep you in check to keep you from competing to keep you average the school system and I'll say this right now if I ever have another kid they're going to Montessori school. They're not going to regular school. They're going to Montessori school. And there's some private schools I scoped out because the curriculum is about actually teaching kids how to learn, not teaching kids uh, to have depository smarts. Oh, like, you know, the people that go on Jeopardy and they're like playing all these like, yeah, this guy's so smart because he knows all of these random ass facts, but his ass can't figure his way out of a paperback. I would rather have... I know how to figure shit out smarts, which is what I got by making that choice of not going back home. I developed those smarts because I didn't go back home because I chose work effort over comfort. Comfort is one of the biggest enemies of success. It's this arch enemy. It will keep you broke. It will keep you poor. It will keep you average. And most important of all, it will keep you from starting. Going back to the guy who wrote me the great email, hey, you know, I think it's awesome that you have uh, made such a beautiful event out of tragedy. He got started. He got started early enough that when bad things happen, he didn't tumble and fall into the abyss of tragedy. He got a serious push on creating a business that now supports him and his family after layoff. After layoff. I want you to think about that. I think a lot of people actually pay attention to my um, cautionary tale of you know being laid off and having no parachute. I think a lot of people pay attention to that and they really, really look at what happened to me and they're like I don't want to be that and I don't want that to happen to you I don't I don't want you to get laid off and end up homeless and living with bums and living on the street and living in some desperate circumstances I don't want that shit for anybody this shit was fucking miserable 
but for my journey, it was required for me to be where I'm at today because I know what waits on me if I just want to sit back and go, well, I don't really feel like writing anything today. And I don't feel like doing any videos and I don't feel like talking to anybody. I'll just sit here and play with the lint in my navel. Calamity. It can happen to anyone. It can totally happen to anyone. So understand, if you're going to be a business person or whatever, a hustler, you got to get started with, with what you have, where you are. I put in the video, if you take an hour a day to work on your business, no more. An hour a day, seven days a week, and with six months, you'd be amazed at where you would be because it's the consistency that is more important than anything else. All right? So if you like the content, you like what you heard, you want even more, there's some blocks here, there's some blocks here, there's some here, here, here. Uh, typically, I don't know where it is when I am on the camera phone, but essentially, check it out. Get your free audio book. Get, join Hustlers University. If you want to enhance your game, the Hustlers Mindset. If you really want to enhance your game, lectures. And let me explain lectures. Hustlers Camp is a bunch of lectures of me talking about hustling. It's 15 bucks. It's the best 15 bucks you ever spent. If you really want to enhance your game, 30 days to 2,500 bucks. And if you want to talk to me, hit, bam, talk to Glendon and set up a call. So that is how this thing goes because I, I love the number of people that I've helped from this channel only who've never bought a product. And I'll talk about that really quickly. If you go back to 2009, you go to the channel page, right? Hit that thing and go back to 2009 or hit some of my playlists and just watch the videos or listen to them. Cause I put them in like auditory podcast format. Essentially you can just listen to them and do something else and get the knowledge. If you just listen to this channel and you never buy anything, you will be more successful. There's too many, I've got too many emails to attest to that, too many testimonials. So if you just listen to the channel and never spend a penny, oh God, he wants me to spend money. <laughs> you will be successful. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you on the good side.